Thank you all for being here, for making it to some of the last talks on a Sunday at a conference. Uh, thank you. I'm going to pretend that it's all that you stayed so you could hear my compelling presentation. So um, my name is Madison Musgrave, and I am the Sustainable Development Goal Specialist for Maxar Technologies, and I also coordinate our open data program. So today's talk is going to focus on satellite imagery and the data derived from it and how we can use that in both disaster preparation and response. So you may have seen Maxar's name around here. So I just, um, I know that, it, you know, we're kind of reintroducing ourselves to the geospatial community. So really briefly, um, up here, you can see these four different companies now make up Maxar. Um, so I work for the part of the company that was formerly Digital Globe. Um, we own and operate satellites, which are collecting high resolution satellite imagery uh, across the world at all times. Um, then we have Radiant Solutions, which derives data and analytics from that uh, imagery, as well as other data sources. And then we have MDA Geospatial, which um, operates Radarsat2. We also have SSL, which they build uh, satellites and other robotics. Um, becoming one Maxar has been extremely helpful in providing solutions for disaster response because it allows us to provide a much more robust response, being able to combine data from all these different sources. And the way that Maxar is related to the OSM community is that our um, imagery helps to build a lot of the uh, base map in OSM. So, you know, briefly, uh, just wanted to share, um, we have the uh, most uh, in-depth and largest um, high-resolution satellite imagery archive available, um, and we also have four satellites in orbit, and as well as Radarsat2, which is collecting radar data worldwide. Um, radar data is extremely helpful in natural disasters uh, like floods um, and uh, Worldview 3 collects uh, shortwave infrared information, which helps in natural disasters such as fires, um, because the shortwave infrared uh, bands can penetrate through haze and smoke. Um, so the open data program, I'm not quite sure why my slides are like that. I realized they got cut off at the top, so my apologies. Um, the open data program uh, was launched in 2017 um, with the initial focus of releasing pre and post event uh, imagery for natural disasters. Um, but now that we uh, are one Maxar and we have all of these other data sources available to us, um, we can release radar data, weather data, analysis, uh, vector data, generally in the form of building footprints from Ecopia, as well as crowdsource data. And we post this all to the open data site, which can be um, downloaded and accessed from nonprofits and uh, NGOs working in the disaster space. So this year so far, we have activated for eight events, um, the most recently being uh, Hurricane Dorian, as well as the Amazon wildfires and flooding in South Sudan. Um, as we all know, the planet is warming and that is contributing to climate change. So we expect as time goes on that natural disasters, unfortunately, are going to grow in uh, frequency as well as intensity. <laughs> So how do we decide which of these events um, we will activate for the open data program? Um, we have an internal committee that anybody can join um, and somebody on the committee brings an event to a vote. Um, they send an email explaining um, what the event is, the expected impact, um, and they send that out to the committee. Once we have reached a consensus, then we move our communication over to Slack, which allows us to be able to respond to events in real time. So for example, with Hurricane Dorian, um, you know, it, it, it changed paths. So initially, um, I brought it to a vote to release uh, imagery over Florida, but then as we know, it um, stayed over the Bahamas and is now shifted course. So we are releasing imagery uh, according to the storm. Um, it's a dynamic process, which allows us to respond to that event in real time. Um, these are some of our uh, partners who, uh, who we work with closely, um, who are accessing our data um, and incorporating it into their different uh, disaster response programs. 
So quickly, um, I wanted to show, um, this is just an overview of the strips that we released um, for the uh, for Hurricane Dorian. So this is a quick overview of um, all of the strips over the um, two northern islands of the Bahamas. Um, when we released the imagery, we um, release it as three-band pan-sharpened imagery, um, which has had atmospheric compensation and dynamic range adjustment applied, which helps to reduce haze in the imagery. Um, it's then tiled out and then put onto a site so that anybody um, that is interested and sign signs up for the program can download and access all of that data. I think um, this area is about uh, 20,000 square kilometers, and then we're continue continuing to monitor the um, path of the storm and we'll release more data as it affects more areas. Um, on the right is just a screenshot from our weather desk platform, which is a platform that tracks uh, tropical events. Um, it is used for meteorolo meteorology. I have a really hard time saying that word, so I was not going to say it, but um, anyways. Um, this is just another example of how we have multiple forms of data um, you know, from all parts of the company that are very beneficial. Um, I essentially have like an in-house meteorologist in, uh, in Herndon who he sends me storm updates every day to our Slack channel. He's constantly tracking these things um, and it's really great to have that new resource. Um, so this is an image of Green Turtle K um, in the Bahamas. Um, this was from taken earlier this year. So Hurricane Dorian made landfall on the Bahamas as a Category 5 storm on September 1st, and it is the strongest tropical storm known to hit the Bahamas. Um, at least 43 deaths have been attributed to the storm so far, and that number is unfortunately expected to rise as recovery efforts continue. Um, the UN has estimated that over 70,000 people are left homeless after this storm. So this next image is of the same area um, taken on GOI on September 5th. Um, you can see just the massive destruction um, that has taken place just on this one particular uh, part of the Bahamas. So in addition to releasing this pre and post event imagery for Hurricane Dorian, we are also running a crowdsourcing campaign. Um, we're working closely with UNUSA, who is supporting other UN agencies on the ground. Um, and we are going to use this crowdsourcing campaign to identify things like destroyed homes, potential landing areas for helicopters, damaged ports, and uh, flooded roads. Um, once the campaign is complete, then all of this data will be available on the open data site to be able to be downloaded and uh, used by the community. Um, I have a few slides that are Sentinel images uh, before and after um, of the hurricane earlier this week. So here I have a few uh, radar uh, images and as I mentioned earlier, radar allows us to be able to see flooded areas uh, much better. Um, so it's just a quick example of some of those. Um, there were reports earlier this week that the Grand Bahamas uh, airport was under six feet of water. So between these two images, you can see all of the flooded area around the airport. Um, next, I'm going to talk about how we use um, satellite imagery to help in uh, wildfires. So as you cannot see, um, this says this is the camp, uh, the area that was affected by the camp fire. Um, so we had another response to the California wildfires that hit late last year. Um, we can look back in our archive to access um, older imagery that we can use for disaster planning and uh, preparation, as well as change detection between old images and new. So this is the same area taken at a different off-nader angle. And then these are the building footprints overlaid over that image for this area. So these building footprints were extracted prior to the fire um, moving through this area so that we could be able to do an analysis of how many structures were burned. So then the campfire um, was struck that area and was the deadliest and most destructive wildfire to date in California. So this is an image of after, um, 
after the fire or during the fire of the same area. And this is our natural color image. So as you can see, if, if the building footprints weren't there, you wouldn't know what this image was of. You know, it, it looks like it might be another planet. By overlaying those uh, building footprints, we, we know that there are structures below, uh, below that haze. And then when we look at this in the shortwave infrared bands, we can penetrate through the haze and smoke. And another thing uh, with shortwave infrared is that you can begin to uh, get a thermal signature from the fire. So the darker areas are where the fire is worse, so we can infer that those structures were most likely burned in the fire. Then we can also run some analysis via our uh, geospatial big data platform, which has a heat maps algorithm um, in it. And this allows us to create this uh, red fire line. And then this is just a zoomed out view of that same area that we were showing, but then, then this is the whole region. Um, so it allows you to be able to see the extent of the fires. Um, in many of these situations, um, the community is evacuated from this area, so they may have no information um, for days or even weeks on whether or not their home was burned. So while you know they may not be able to go there and find out, we can do some kind of analysis to give a good idea of the of the area before people return. Um, this also can help to inform disaster response um, before emergency personnel even arrive on the scene. They can know what to expect. And then this is a um, overview of the burned area analysis. So the areas that are in orange were most likely burned. And we derived that from combining the near uh, infrared, the shortwave infrared, and the building footprints. The last thing that I'm going to talk to you all about today is Cyclone Edai. Um, Cyclone Edai made landfall in Mozambique on March 14th of this year as a Category 3 tropical cyclone. Um, it also affected those living in Zimbabwe and Malawi with extremely heavy rains, which led to flooding and mudslides. Um, and then after the storm cleared due to all the standing water, there was also a cholera outbreak in the area. Um, more than 1,300 people uh, died from the storm, making it the second deadliest tropical cyclone uh, on record anywhere in the world. So this is a before image of Baira, which is off of the coast of Mozambique in the Sofala province. Um, and this city was nearly 90% destroyed by, by the storm. So this is a before, and then here is an after image of that same area. I don't have a laser pointer, but as you can see in this um, field that was previously empty, you can see that emergency uh, structures or em emergency tents were set up, and you can also begin to understand just the, the widespread devastation and the debris um, that is scattered across this image. Um, once we activated for this event, one of my coworkers reached out to me and told me that his brother is the director of JAPAIGO uh, in Mozambique, one of their programs there. JAPAIGO is a, an inter international aid organization uh, that is affiliated with Johns Hopkins University. Um, so my coworker introduced me to his brother-in-law, and we began working together together. Um, he provided me uh, data points for health clinics that were located further inland. So I helped work with our collection planning team to ensure that we were collecting not just imagery on the coast, but imagery further inland. Um, and we released all of that on the open data site. So Darren at Japigo was able to use the uh, before and after images as well as uh, building footprints, which I wish this was a a cooler looking screenshot, but um, we released 1.2 million building footprints in the Sofala province um, and made sure that the images corresponded with the locations of their health clinics. So he was 
able to do some quick um, analysis and created a before and after map so that he could try to assess damage to their rural health clinics prior to it, people having to travel there because it was such an emergency that it was important for the uh, efforts to be focused on the coast, but it was they still wanted to know whether these rural clinics were affected. Um, so this is just another example of how combining these multiple data sources can really aid in these kinds of disasters. And so that's all I have if anybody has any questions. Uh, did you ever go back and ground truth, like the the fire damage buildings, to see you know how well your <clears throat> excuse me how well your estimates held up? Um, we haven't done that, um, but uh, with Hurricane Dorian, we are actually hoping to work with a um, organization. I can't remember the name of it. Um, my coworker from another part of the company told me the other day that he works with an organization that goes and does ground truthing. So we're hoping to combine uh, for the Dorian response. I think that they're there now assessing the feasibility of how many islands they're going to be able to visit. Um, and then we're also going to release, if, if this um, is feasible for us to work together on this, they're going to also add that ground truthing to the open data site. So we, we haven't got to do that yet, but we are hoping to start doing that going forward. Um, have you guys released as part of this program or are you thinking about releasing radar set to imagery? Um, we do, we do sometimes. Um, I think, I can't remember which events we have released it for. Um, we don't for every, um, for every event. We are one, we are one company, but we still are in, you know, across the world and still learning how to work together. So sometimes um, we don't always get to add all of the kinds of data and information that we would like to to the site. So the primary thing in every in every event is the imagery, but I am trying to make an effort for every event going forward to add as much as we possibly can. So I think we will be for Dorian. Um, what's the resolution of your imagery compared to like Bing and uh, the ESRI when on just like the map options for OSM? Um, can any of my technical Maxar friends in the audience help to answer? I, our imagery is um, like from Worldview 3 would be 30 centimeter resolution. Um, and then Worldview 2 a GOI would be 50 centimeter. I'm not sure how that compares to the other uh, imagery sources because I have spent my entire geospatial career at Digital Globe, so I'm very familiar with our resolutions, but I'm not sure how that compares. Because I've been noticing like doing some Bahamas work, like the Bing and ESRI kind of match up, but then Maxar's a little off, so you just have to move the buildings and stuff. But so anyway. Do you Pete, do you have anything to add to that? Anybody else? I'm not the most technical person, I will admit, uh, first, so I could get back to you on yeah, how that compares. That's a, that's a, a projection issue. Geo registration. Right, so that's not a, 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 um, a resolution issue. That's geo registration, and you know, obviously, we think ours is geo registered correctly. Uh, even though it is off from the other ones, but <laughs> right, that, that's uh, everybody's uh, opinion of whether which one's more ground truthy than the other. Yeah. And then I could add that uh, I think our mosaics are accurate to 10.2 meters C90, and um, uh, the the mosaics tend to be at the less accurate end of the spectrum in areas with a lot of elevation change. In flatter areas, it can be closer to uh, like four or five meters C90. Thanks, guys. Does anybody else have any other questions? All right, thank you. Um, please reach out to me if you have any questions or if you have any feedback about how the open data site could be better. Um, if any of you are interested, um, you can, uh, it's just, um, 
I think it's still at digitalglobe.com, moving to, to maxr.com. You can visit the open data site and you can sign up um, and you can be put on a distribution list. So every time an event occurs, you'll be notified and then you can download and access that uh, imagery as well as the other data sources that I mentioned. So um, we're always happy to um, receive feedback from the community that's using the data. And I would really love to hear from you all if you have any ways of how we can improve it. So thank you.